our political leaders have been hard at work at trying to get the economy back on track. Sure. And we certainly know that poverty in America is an issue that doesn't have uh, easy solutions. Recently, uh, Catholic Charities USA held a centennial leadership conference here in Chicago whose goal was to address poverty and try to figure out how to reduce it. Our producer, Jim Dish, has a report. Let's take a look. Mm. It's difficult to put a single face on poverty. That message is clear when you look at the compelling photographs taken by In Our Own Backyard, a group of photojournalists dedicated to alleviating poverty in America. Alicia Romero lives in Tucson, Arizona with her husband and three young daughters. They were doing well until they came face to face with unemployment, loss of a business, and home foreclosure. It really affects the family in, in such a in a failure way and it really in your mind in our case we didn't want to be in this situation we didn't ask to be in the situation our plans was to have an american dream which ended up an american nightmare alicia's spiral into poverty and countless other horror stories have led catholic charities usa to renew its commitment to action on behalf of the poor we have a moral mandate as part of our religion to care for our neighbor in need and we see that over and over again in the Gospels and that also is brought out very clearly in Pope Benedict's first encyclical where he says if we are truly to be church there are three things we have to be about and that is preaching the scriptures celebrating the sacraments and serving our neighbor in need. Catholic Charities USA is holding a series of poverty summit meetings across America in this its centennial year. Among those participating in the Chicago summit, former Attorney General Jim Ryan. In order to make progress, we got to listen. And I, I give US, Catholic Charities USA a lot of credit for doing these kind of listening conferences to hear what the laity and people in local communities think we need to do what programs are working that we can bring to the national level. What they're hearing is that nobody is immune from poverty, a point emphasized in this video shown at the Chicago conference. We think we know what poverty looks like today. But in reality, poverty surrounds us. The women and men who take three buses to work late at night. The soldiers fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan who can't feed their families. Teenagers who have to leave school to babysit while their mothers and fathers work. Seniors who have to choose between paying their utilities or buying food. In Today, all, 40 million people in America live in poverty. Catholic Charities has set a lofty goal of cutting poverty in half by the year 2020. And there are lessons being learned about how to attack the problem. We can't keep doing things the way we are. That in fact, um, if we look at the history of social services programs in this country, um, we have a system in which we wait for people to fall into a situation and then we ask them to come in and tell us um, what their deficits are in order to be able to help them. And the message that we're giving is that we need to find people where they're at, um, celebrate their assets and help them get to the next place rather than waiting for them to fail. Well, there are two things that I think are, are going to be critical if we are to have an effect. And the first is that we actually make advocacy a part of our service, that we have to speak up for those that we serve, because usually they're people who can't speak for themselves. But the other piece is we have to find new ways of providing our services that will really have an impact. And that woman you met at the beginning of this report, Alicia Romero, she is now a member of the Catholic Charities USA Consumer Advisory Council and is grateful for how Catholic Charities responded to her plight. We're going to help you. It's not a promise, but it's a start. And thank you. I say thank God. You know, I asked for, Lord, help me save my home. Give me the lottery. I promise to help, help, help. Uh, clients or people in my situation. I didn't get the lottery, but I'm here to help <laughs> in, an, in a funny way uh, because a, a, an agency such as Catholic Charities came through for me that way to help me fulfill that dream again and that hope. For The Church, The Cardinal, and You, I'm Jim Dish. You know, many of us are, are very fortunate to be aware of the good work that Catholic Charities does. Mm -hmm. what, if you could give us a, a quick overview of some of the ways that it addresses poverty in this country. Catholic Charities does many things in terms of uh, keeping people together in families and adoption services, all kinds of things. 
But it does also address uh, the immediate concerns of people who are hungry and don't have enough clothes, don't have housing. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, 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 the church has an ideal of voluntary poverty. That's a virtue. But the involuntary poverty that comes to people when they lose a job, when uh, their home is foreclosed, that's not a virtue. And it's against our sense of solidarity with one another. And so there's a role for private charities. There's a role for government. Uh, we have to try to work together to see to it that people, uh, even if they must live in very modest uh, circumstances, nonetheless have food and housing and, and work and human dignity and respect. And Catholic Charities does that uh, extremely well. Uh, the uh, poverty that is voluntary is a kind of witness to the fact that this is a passing world. Religious are supposed to do that. But the poverty of service, that is Catholic Charities, means you take what you have, and sometimes a lot of money, and you give it away in order to help people who otherwise would not have uh, the dignity that we all should have as human beings. So it's very, very important. And Catholic Charities in the Archdiocese has a long history of being really involved with poor people. Unfortunately, there are newly poor people now because of the financial situation. A lot of our parishes, uh, not only through Catholic Charities, but on their own, have job fairs and they're trying to address this terrible scourge of, of the loss of a job and therefore often the loss of self-respect that now is a plague among us. You know, I, I was very impressed actually just this morning, I saw in the news um, with the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, Catholic Charities is already on the scene sure. providing food, I was surprised, for the families of the fishermen who are now put out of work because they can't fish sure. those waters. Well, there's a Catholic Charities in every diocese. And so when there's a particular tragedy, as we have again in the Gulf area, our Catholic Charities speak to their Catholic Charities and, and there's a quick exchange of, of goods so yeah. that people can be attended to. 